folks that shout and give God praise. We're going to have church tonight. We're going to have worship. We are going to move into His presence with praise. And this is the atmosphere where miracles happen. God's got a miracle with your name on it, so enter in. As Lance Palmer and the gang come, we're going to sing. We're going to shout. Good morning, and God bless each and every one of you today. God has given us yet another day to praise Him. I hope that whenever you woke up this morning, you had God on your mind. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. Welcome to New Birth Church Services. And on Wednesday nights, we also have Bible study online. And we are glad that you came. Please feel free to join our prayer group as well. We have a prayer group on yahoo.com and the link is http www.groups.yahoo.com slash group slash new birth ministries. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God today for God is good. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. People come and go as we do the Bible study. So you'll see people coming in. You'll see people leaving. That's okay. They come back later. I understand that most people have their churches that they go to, which is excellent. God bless them and their churches as well. All right. Uh, let's open up with prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, thank you for today, Lord God. I thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for starting us on a new day. Lord God, you didn't have to, but you did. We thank you for the love that you give us. I ask right now, Father, that you bless this service that we are having online, that hundreds of people come back to listen to. I ask that you soften their hearts, Lord God, and cause them to accept your son, Yeshua, your son, Jesus the Christ as their Savior, for that is the only reason that we're doing this, Lord God, is to get other people to join us in the kingdom of heaven, in your holy family, to learn how to be holy, how to cancel out the, the evil that has been trying to overrun their lives. Lord God, we ask right now you, that you uh, give us the power right now to cancel out cancer. We bind these evil things in Jesus' name. We cancel out people who are not in their right minds. Lord, we bind it in Jesus' name. We cancel out poverty in Jesus' name. We cancel out all negativity in Jesus' name. Lord God, we ask that you bless the widow, the children, the fatherless, those who are imprisoned, whether it be in jail or emotionally or mentally, Lord God. Lord God, we ask that you continue to bless all those who come to New Birth Ministries looking for you. Let them see that we are called by you, and we may be a strange lot, but you called us your own. Let them see the you in us, Lord God. Bless our children and our households, Lord God. We thank you for all that you've done, keeping food in our mouths and keeping us from harm. Lord God, for all of your children that are on their way to church this morning to worship you, Take away the spirit of intimidation that tries to attack them, to keep them from attending church, to keep them from enjoying themselves once they do decide to attend it. Lord, there are a lot of people getting hurt in churches, and there are a lot who are looking for you, but they can't seem to find it over the flesh that has entered into your body, into your churches, Lord God. We ask that you cancel out the four wall syndrome where people think they have to sit in four walls to hear your word. 
We ask that you continue to anoint us as we go out into this world and preach and teach your holy word, Lord God. Cause things to come to our mind, Lord God, that we would not automatically say ourselves. Cause other people to see that it is the Spirit of God using us. And Lord, cause us to remain silent at the times you would have us to remain silent. To speak at the times you would have us to speak. Give us wisdom. Give us understanding. Cause us to love. We need to learn how to love. So many people are looking for silver and they're looking for gold. And they don't even ask that you teach them how to love and how to receive love Jesus is love and without him love will not exist for the people who have mocking spirits that come on and just want to make fun of your children we cancel them out and we bind them in the name of Jesus Christ they are welcome but the spirits that use them are not and we say to you today, the Lord rebuke thee. Thank you, Jesus. Regardless of what the weather is like, Lord God, we still love you. We will still talk to you and pray to you. Lord God, we are just thankful of you being in our lives. Thankful for this day. Thankful for the preachers and teachers who stand up and speak the word of God regardless of what's going on around them regardless of what's being said about them we thank you for your sustaining providence Lord God and we know that we're standing on holy ground when we commune with you in Jesus holy name I pray amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. Good morning. You see my little note up there? All right, before we get started, let me try it. Amen. Are you there? Uh, okay, guys, the way things go on, amen. The way things go on, we need a little extra protection. <laughs> amen, right? Okay, praise the Lord. Did you want to try it? Okay, try and see if that works for you before we get started. Okay, because I just clicked it. Are you mic? No mic. Okay, you want to try and see if it, if it works for you? Let me let me know if that works for you. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock, he's my fortress, he's my deliverer, in him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. We are standing on holy ground 
And I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in His presence on holy ground. Lord, you're welcome into this place. Lord, you're welcome into this broken vessel. For you choose to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our voice and we offer up this praise unto your name. Lord, you're welcome into this place. Lord, you're welcome into this broken vessel. For you choose to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our voice and we offer up this praise unto your name. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, for God is so good, hallelujah. God is so good, hallelujah, God is so good, He's so good to me, and He answers prayers, hallelujah, He answers prayers, hallelujah, he answers prayers, he's so good to me, anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Let the power of your Holy Spirit fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me, anointing fall on me, let the power of your Holy Spirit fall on me, anointing fall on me. 
anointing fall on me anointing fall on me hallelujah hallelujah bless your Yahweh bless his name bless your name Lord amen praise God so it was working for you Rev amen I see you changed it God is good okay I wonder if uh, the, the right click if you right click it should work we're, that's okay we're, we're on though amen we're on with it praise God I know God has been good to you I know God has been good to each and every one of us he's been good to me whenever you feel down oh no right click okay oh okay whenever you feel down and out God is there God is with you amen um, uh, what we're going to talk about today is and I promise not to keep anybody long it's not about uh, how long you can preach but how good amen how much the Spirit of God is in it <laughs> praise the Lord so with all the things that we've been going through all throughout the world not just in in America but all throughout the world um, people are, are, are having a hard time they're having a hard time trying to make it uh, people are losing their homes Amen. People don't, their, their bank account, banks are shutting down so much, you don't know if you're going to wake up in the morning with a bank account or not. Somebody's going to steal your money and say, see ya. You know, the, the way things are going on, we depend so much on worldly things. We depend so much on worldly things that we forget that we are supposed to depend on God. We are supposed to depend on God. Amen. We need to learn to depend on God and His Word. Not on man, not on bank accounts, not on grocery stores, not on our jobs. We must, until man learns how to depend on God, he, he we, us, whatever, is going to have a problem. <laughs> Reverend said, if the foundations crumble, God is still there. Amen. Regardless, regardless of what we go. But what happens is people, that fear enters us so quickly that we forget what God can do. We're so used to trying to do things ourselves, we forget what God can do. Amen. And, and when things begin to crumble down around us, we end up losing our minds, leaving our husbands and our wives, amen, and, 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 and treating the children bad. Uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot going on. There's people out there robbing older people at Mac machines and knocking on their doors and pretending to be utility companies just to take their gold and silver and their money. There's so much going on. What God wants us to know today is He has already given you overshadowing providence. Amen? Overshadowing providence. If you look in Matthew chapter 23, I'm, I'm going to read Matthew 23, verse 20, uh, 37. And I'm going to jump around just a tad, not too bad, but <laughs> if you keep up with me, praise God. And if you can't, just keep it in your heart. <laughs> he doesn't mind. Amen. Matthew 23, 27. And this is just one example. I have a few other examples. Matthew 23, 37 it is. It says, uh, now this is Jesus speaking. He says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stoneth them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings and ye would not behold your house is left unto you desolate for I say unto you ye shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord amen so Jesus is telling us right there um, he was speaking to Jerusalem and speaks to us today. Same thing. He said, you stoned the prophets. Now, 
the the bad prophets that are out there that are teaching mm, 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 mm. yes Lord that are teaching uh, worldly prosperity amen I'll put it that way <laughs> worldly prosperity how to do this how to sell this online how to have your own this and your own that how to write this and how to own that you know they're, they're and they're not mentioning Jesus in it God the Holy Spirit has nothing to do with it they're just more like businessmen with the title Rev in front of their name Jesus is saying now uh, you are stoning the real prophets the prophets that I send you you stone them when God sends some, see whenever God when somebody comes on and speaks the truth did you ever notice that the truth hurts you know, you know how I can tell when somebody loves me and, and, and I don't know if you ever thought of this before or not, but I, I think it is. I can tell when somebody loves me because some of the things that they say to me is uplifting, yet sometimes it hurts. They don't want to see me continuously making the same mistakes over and over. When someone speaks to you in a corrective type of way, every now and then, that doesn't have to be every, you know, once a week. You know, but when someone speaks to you in a corrective type of way, that means they love you and they don't want to see you make the same mistakes over and over again. That's how I know somebody loves me. And what happens with us in, in the body of Christ is we are so used to being pacified and, and, and coddled and treated like little babies that we listen to these people when they come around and say just, you know, one bite of an apple heals all of your problems. You know, but they don't come on and tell you that the, the day, that you have to study to show thyself approved. You have to study God's word. You have to learn how to have a koinonia relationship with the Lord God Almighty. You have to do God's commandments and God's will, not your own. Now, when the prophets come, like just here in Jerusalem, when, when the prophets come, the see, good morning, amen. It's not what they want to hear. They want to be tickled. They want their ears to be tickled. All right. Amen. People nowadays want you to tell them not what God wants them to know, but they want you to tell them what they want to hear. God says here in Matthew uh, 23, 37, don't deny the prophet. If you're upset with the prophet, take it to God and pray to God. Amen. God has given you. Jesus is telling us now. He said, How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, and you refused it? Jesus is saying, Just as chickens gather their, uh, just as a hen gathers her, chi her chickens under her wings, Jesus said, I can do that to you every day, all the time. But you refuse it. So God is showing us, see, this is his overshadowing providence. He provides for us. God is, for centuries, God has been trying to let us know that he provides for us. And we are so busy going by the flesh, what the flesh says and what the eyes can see. Some, you know, you've got to watch your eyes. <laughs> you know, make, make, you've got to be careful of what your eyes see. Because what's happening is, when you see things running out, if you see your food running out, if you don't have enough money, you're living from paycheck to paycheck, and then that's when everybody goes crazy and says, oh no, what am I going to do, what am I going to do? And then they, they get high blood pressure, diabetes, everything sets in, all kinds of sicknesses and illnesses set in for nothing. You, half of us, I, I, I would go on to say more than half, I'm not a scientist, can't, can't prove it, but a lot of us are going through sicknesses and illnesses unnecessarily. We are creating them ourselves out of worry. Instead of depending on God, when you see your bank account go down low, or when you see your refrigerator go down low, or when you see that you don't have enough money to put that child through college, or whenever you're getting ready to lose your home, your car, whatever it is, you need to depend on God. If your tennis shoes are getting ready, to, almost ready to have a hole in them, Depend on depend. You have to depend on God, have faith in Him, and trust that He will send somebody into your life to bless you. We are all here to bless one another. Don't be afraid to sit back and wait for God to send somebody to bless you. He says, "You have not because you ask not." 
your neighbor might have a pair of tennis shoes for you. But if you don't say hi to them and hold a conversation with them and talk about the Lord with them and soften them up a little bit and get used to each other, they're not going to give you anything. You get back what you give. Whatever seeds you plant, that's what you get back. God gives us sustaining providence. Okay, now let's go to this story. Deuteronomy. Turn to the front of your Bibles to Deuteronomy, 5th book. Amen. Deutero, 33, chapter 33, verse 26. <clears throat> Amen. God does not want his children to be without. And we need to stop acting like he does. God does not want you to be without. Amen. Now, I'm going to read Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 26 to 29. And it says, There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, and in his excellency on the sky. That verse is pretty by itself. Amen. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. Israel, including those grafted in, then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine, also his heaven shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord. See, he says people saved, but you are, you are saved by the Lord. You have to believe that. The shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. Praise God. Now, look what he says. God rides high upon the heaven. And it says, and he is your help. Verse 26, God is your divine helper. Not the bank. Amen. Not your relative. Not your husband. Not your wife. God is your divine helper. Amen. And then the next verse the eternal God, he is your refuge. Now, here we have the word helper. God is your helper. And then verse 27 it says, he is your refuge. Amen. With those two words alone, what else do you need to know? Everlasting. This goes on forever. God is telling you that no matter what <coughs> you are going through, he is always there for you. You don't have to beg God to help you. Amen. And it says, if you believe and trust in him, he will thrust out your enemies. God was always saving Israel all throughout the Bible and thrusting out their enemies. And yet their belief and their trust in him still waned. How? It makes you wonder how. How could they still disbelieve and not trust in God? That causes you to lack in every area of your life. We still do this today, not just Israel. We still depend on what we can see instead of depending on what we cannot see. God cannot be seen, the unseen God. And just like in 2 Kings chapter 4, God tested the widow with her oil and she passed the test. Amen. She passed the test. The Beatitudes say, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, because they've learned to live without the attractions of this world. The blood of Jesus. Amen. They learn to live without the attractions of this world. Their belief system in God is so strong because they've gone through boot camp and learned how to go without. Once you've gone without so long, without the things that you really don't need, you learn to live with the things that you do need and, and, that God has already given you. Amen. God tells us that being a friend to the world is being at enmity with him. 
You cannot have both. You cannot have the world and God at the same time. God says he will, he, he's a jealous God and he will not have any other gods before him. You are not to have idols. He wants to be depended on for every single thing in your life, no matter where, what kind of jeopardy you are in, no matter what's happening to you. Look to the hills from whence cometh your help. He wants to be your supplier, not Walmart or the government. You don't have to take mind-altering medication just to get a heavenly supply. He doesn't require all of that. On earth, we go to the doctor and get filled up with narcotics. We get our blood tested to make sure it's in there <laughs> so we can keep getting money. And we end up getting a check once a month that is too low to live on anyway. Stay on God's constant supply. God has constant supply. He never runs out. He made everything. <laughs> Amen? Don't live from paycheck to paycheck. Live from provision to provision. Amen. Don't fall for subtle surrenders and depend on the world to take care of you. That's prostitution. Don't prostitute yourself just to be taken care of. If you believe in God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, the triune God, they will help you. You won't have to sell yourself or sell your soul for a morsel of food, for a place to stay. God gives you overshadowing, sustaining providence. Will you believe your bill collectors or will you believe God? Try God. He works. Amen. God is your divine helper, your divine refuge. Your friends can help you always in each troubling situation how can your friends heal cancer they can't they can't make you grow shorter and your friends certainly can't make you grow taller and they can't remove confusion from your mind God can if you have any questions don't ask man ask God he's the one that can answer you Amen. Deuteronomy 33:27 says God will put you under his divine arms and thrust your enemies out. When you look up the word thrust, it says to push or drive with force. Shove, stab, pierce, interject. God pushes your enemies out of your way and makes your way clear. Just like he does for our Bible studies and our church online services. There's all, Satan always sends somebody to try to aggravate us while we're take, uh, talking about the word of God. And little does he realize we could care less. Because we, when I talk, <clears throat> I'm speaking for the kingdom of heaven. I don't have time for simpleness, for simpletons. As long as me and Reverend Nicole are online, we are online through Yahoo Messenger. We are online through our Yahoo group. We get emails. We're on Facebook. <laughs> Amen. And we're all over the place. We're on WizIQ. And nobody gets in contact with us. Isn't that strange? Isn't that strange how... The devil waits. Everybody waits until we do our online services, until we do our Bible studies and our church online. I can guarantee you that almost every time we get online with Bible studies or church, someone will come on and try to capture our attention so that we can take it away from God. And I am not going to fall for it. God has been too good to me for me to turn my back on him. Amen. God interjects. He pushes your enemies aside. Amen. He pushes them out of your way and makes your way clear. He makes your crooked places straight. If you depended on God and if you prayed to him and asked him to reveal himself to you, you wouldn't have so much time on your hands to aggravate other people. Amen. So when you act out of order like that, you're just letting people know that you are not a child of God. Just like Satan did. 
acting just like your father Satan because you're not acting like God. God does not bombard people. He does not embarrass people. He does not try to hurt people. He does not trip people up. He does not hinder people. He makes your crooked places straight. Amen. And then verse 29 said, when I was reading uh, Deuteronomy uh, 33, 29, it said, Happy are thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help. God says, you are happy when you follow him. Amen. He makes you happy. God gives you joy. You don't have time for, for small talk. You don't have time for junk. You don't have time for none of this stuff that the world offers. It doesn't turn you on. It, you can't use it. it and, and you surely am not going to allow it to use you. Amen. Be happy and move on. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 32. Amen. Praise God. God is good. I mean, when you try God, uh, I guarantee you, <laughs> life would be better for you. <laughs> Amen. Um, a person has too much time on her hands always seems to get in trouble. Matthew 6.32 says, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. See, God knows that you have need. This is what I'm trying to convey to everybody that's listening to this today and to, the, to those that come back, the hundreds that come back later. Amen. God bless you all for listening. But God is trying to tell you that he knows what you need. See, what happens is we go to church for years and we listen to preachers saying over and over and over, God knows the very number of, of the number of hairs in your head. If God takes care of the sparrow, won't he take care of you? A blade of grass. And what happens is it becomes a cliche. We hear it, we hear it, we hear it. You hear it so much that you, you start to, instead of allowing it to, 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 to come into your heart and open up your heart and soften it up to God, you become hard towards it. But God is telling you when you hear these things, God wants you to know it's the truth. Do not, do not uh, back off from the truth. God says that we seek what God's people already have. Gentiles are seeking what his people already have. Appreciate his divine care. Use it to the max. It's yours. God knows all your needs. I'm going to say that again. Appreciate God's divine care. Appreciate it. Use it to the max. That means talk to him all the time. Talk till you feel like you got it right. Talk till he starts to talk back. Then you know you did right. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. He knows your needs. How's about just laying back and watching him work things out for you? Try it. It's easy. Lay back and trust that God will come through. You know what this means? This means have blind faith in God. Have blind faith. You get a phone call, something is very demanding. What are you going to do? Cut yourself and give him blood? You put, God says, I'm standing here, I'm standing here. You know, I'm, I'm here, I'm here. Call on me, I'll help you. If you don't call on God, you'll be in hot water. Call yourself a tea bag. Amen. <laughs> you'll be in hot water. Make up your mind. Are you going to call on God or are you not? Matthew 6.24 says that no man can serve two masters. You'll love one or hate the other. You cannot serve God and mammon together. Depend on those checks and keep jumping through hoops to make ends meet or trust in God and have them met. In fact, I know a lady, she gets blessed by looking down. I, I know a lady, amen, she gets blessed by looking down. She always finds money. You know the Bible says with God all things are possible. It began to happen to me as well. I went through the same thing. I've paid my bills by finding money. Amen. 
I call it my heavenly salary. Amen. <laughs> it doesn't happen to me as much as it did, uh, does her. But uh, God is good. He has, he has so many different ways to take care of you. Amen. God is good. Luke 12, 7 is the one that says the hairs on your head are numbered. And you mean more to God than sparrows. That's divine care. That's God's knowledge. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your care on him for he cares for you. Care is forbidden. You are not to worry. Long story short, God expects for you to be careless. Now, now that doesn't mean to be simple-minded, but learn how to pass absolutely everything on to God. Tell him everything. What are you taking away from God? What blessings are you missing in your life because you will not trust God and tell him that you need help with something? Are you telling God 100% of your life? Are you discussing it with him 100% of your life? Or are you just giving him so much? God wants us to be careless. He wants us to just walk off that cliff and just know he's going to reach out his arms and, and grab us and help us. Now, don't go out there and walk off a cliff, okay? <laughs> okay, as an example, amen. God wants you to fall into his arms. Amen. He's a big boy. He can handle it all. No matter what you tell him, he can handle it. So many people are so busy getting on that telephone gossiping and talking about folks and getting online having their little private sessions and they don't think anybody knows it but the Spirit of God can see it and the Spirit of God knows. Amen. Instead of going to God, closing their closets and closing their doors and talking to the Lord in the privacy of their home. Presidents go gray through worry. How many presidents have you seen that a year or two after they've been in office, they're gray. They look like older men. If they give it all to God, who started this country, in fact, maybe they'd keep their color. <laughs> Amen. You know, <laughs> I hate to say it, but the grayer they get, that's letting you know that they're not giving it to God. They're not trusting. Ooh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. They're not trusting God to handle it. Mm. 1 Peter 5.10. Woo, my, my. You can run, but you sure can hide. 1 <laughs> Peter 5.10. God will make you perfect. He will establish, strengthen, and settle you. Hang on to him. As they would say in teen language, stupidly fall for Jesus. Amen. Don't be scared. Watch what he'll do. Of course, stupidly doesn't describe your character, but your decision. Your decision to follow Jesus. Other people will call you stupid. Oh, she's one of them Jesus people. He's one of them Jesus freaks. Not how stupid are you? Not really. Uh, be, uh, how they say? Be um, wise as a fox, yet harmless as a dove. Amen. The world will call you stupid. God calls it wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Psalm 111.10 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. To fear, uh, when, when it says to fear God, that doesn't mean shaking your boots. It means have respect for Him and know that there's some kind of way, you don't know how, but there's some kind of way that He will provide for you. God wants to provide for you. If you are without, don't blame God. If there's anybody out there that wants to accept God's Son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua. If you have been feeling lonely, and if you have been feeling a tug on your heart, that's God. That's God letting you know that He's there for you. He wants to be there for you. He wants to love you. He wants to open up His arms and grab you. He wants you to always have him. He sent his son down here on earth. This wretched, nasty, dirty, cursed earth. To die. Jesus came here to die for you. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what race, nationality, what nation you're from, what country you're from, or what state you're from. 
I don't care what your beliefs used to be. You could have been in witchcraft. You could have been in any kind of sin. One sin is just like the other. Jesus died. For all of your sins. And he wants to he wants to forgive you. But you have to allow him to. If you feel that tug on your heart, and it's gonna be it's gonna seem like a long haul, but you have a way to go. God wants to walk with you. He wants to teach you and talk with you. Just repeat after me. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, repeat these words. Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. Teach me your ways. Teach me your statutes. Help me to keep your commandments. Be my Savior. I wait on you. Amen. If you said those words, God bless you. If you said those words, Jesus just forgave you of your sins. It was that easy. Now what you have to do is to make the next step is to start studying his word because God speaks to us through his word, through this Bible. God speaks to us. Get yourself a Bible, a concordance, and a dictionary and start studying. Go to Bible classes online. Go to Bible classes in your country, city, or state. Go to, go, uh, go to church, a Bible-believing church, a church that preaches the full gospel, the Old Testament and the New Testament, and learn of Him. Have blind faith for Him. Don't let anything on the outside deter you. Don't go by what you see on the outside. Go by what he, he gives you to feel on the inside. God bless you. And welcome to the family of God. I applaud you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I hope that you got something out of this Bible study. Amen. And I also hope that you walk and talk with God. I hope that you find someone that you can study with. I hope that God sends somebody into your life with wisdom. We all need somebody smarter than us. Amen? We all need somebody with more spirituality than us so that we can learn. God doesn't want you to be with somebody lower than you. He doesn't want you to go down. He's not trying to, what do you call it, dumb you down or whatever. He wants you to step up and learn of him. Praise God. Jesus is good. Amen. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen and amen and amen. To God be the glory to God be the glory, to God be the glory of the things he has done with his blood. He has saved me with his power, he has raised me. To God be the glory for the things he has done. God bless you and go in peace. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Amen.